Hey guys, this week we are at Weiss Lake, Alabama. I am here at the Little River Canyon. This is uh, upstream at one of the headwaters of the tributaries that feeds Weiss Lake. We're gonna go out there today and I'm meeting up with Jason Hawkins. He's a longtime friend and a great crappie angler. He's even got a couple trophies on his wall. We're gonna go out there and we're gonna check out exactly what Weiss Lake is all about. But on the way here, I got to see some of the coolest stuff that this area of the country, Cherokee County, Alabama, has to offer. There's Cornwall Furnace. That is one of the best preserved cold blast furnaces in the country. That is straight from the Civil War. It was used to provide pig iron for the Confederacy. And if you bring the family, you have got to go over and check out Pirates Bay Water Park. There's stuff there for the kids to keep them entertained for hours. And I even like in water slides too. If you're into four-wheeling, tearing up that dirt, Indian Mountain ATV Park is a must-see and a must-go-to. They've got a cool little shop over here. It's Orbix Hot Glass. They make all kinds of ornaments and everything else. I may see if they can make me a crappie. Now, we were able to stay over at uh, Bay Springs Country Inn last night, and we ended up trailering over to Little River Marina to launch this morning. And I'm meeting up with Jason, and we're gonna hit the water. I've spent most of my life chasing. Chasing success, chasing money, chasing respect. Truth is, nothing has brought me joy like being right here on the water. Rod in hand, hook on the line, chasing crappie. I am a crappie angler. These are our stories, and this is On The Hook. What's going on, man? I just ready to catch some fish, man. There you go. What kind of fish are we going after today? We're going to go after crappie. Are they going to be mostly black or white? Mostly black. Okay, black mostly crappie. Black. What kind of water depth do you reckon we're looking at? Between 8 to 10 foot, some 12, but not much deeper than that. Okay, so everything less than 15 foot? Y yeah. Okay, basically. good deal. Man, I've been uh, really wanting to get back down here. This place is absolutely beautiful. Yes, it's a, you know, it's very beautiful here. You know, it's nice to live this close to a, a lake that you can come in and catch crappie uh, just about year round. Good deal. Let's get out there and check it out, man. All right. Let's do it. I'm on the board here. All right, guys. I was pressing Jason for a little bit of info on the way everything was going to go today. And the reason for that is now I know we're going after black crappie. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my boat. I'm going to cut the rigs off that I already have rigged up. I've got a quarter ounce chartreuse head with a red and white jig on it. That ain't going to work. Black crappie's main food source is going to be insects and larvae. So I need an unpainted head. I need a natural color, either a monster milk or maybe a brown, and it's gotta be small because black crappie like a smaller bait. Everything starts with a great foundation, so does fishing. And we started out in the middle of the lake, right out in the wind. There's no protection of this whatsoever. And it's gonna make this morning a little bit more challenging. There we go, Got there's him. one of them. Yep. Well, he's got a little pull to him. Just go ahead and fish, I'll get this one. We're on the board, Mr. Jason. Good job, good job. Just wish it had been me caught the first one, that's all. <laughs> Well, I'll let you look at him. Yeah, See well, how pretty he is. Yeah, rub it in, rub it in. When I hit the pile both times, I got bit. But in the wind and the current, when we're casting, when the jig hits the water, it's where it's supposed to be. But by the time it gets 12 feet down, it's five or six feet off. And that's why I preach it. Get out in that wind and practice, practice, practice. That way you can get comfortable with the boat control and increase your accuracy. Right now, guys, the water temp is 64 degrees. We're sitting in 20 foot of water on the edge of a point. And this brush pile is at the bottom edge of it. We had a, a bad cold front come through last night. Uh, Jason Hawkins in the state of Alabama did something that made uh, summertime mad and she just packed up and left. <laughs> so uh, I actually broke out my tennis shoes this week. As bad as I hated it.
You got, you got it. it. Yep. Uh, he's 12 inch fish, probably. Oh, I got him. I got him. You like the sound of fish? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta have them sound effects when you're catching them fish. Go ahead and grab a trolling motor. I don't know, you might be able to see it on this front camera here, but I was just shaking that rod for all it's worth trying to send vibrations down through there because these fish are hunkered down, man. They, they ain't wanting it. This is force feeding 101, and I hope I read the book. That one's looking, uh, come on, turn. Here he comes. I got him. Got him. Finally. Finally, we got him. In. I just get him in. Oh, mine looks a little old bitty compared to yours. <laughs> well, that's the way it's supposed, supposed to be. I'm yeah. the host, man. Yeah. I'm the host. See, he read the script. He knows how this goes. That's right. <laughs> I met Jason a few years back, right before he won that uh, American Crappie Trail Tournament there on Gunnersville. And I got to know him, and he is an awesome dude and a great fisherman to boot. My name's Jason Hawkins, and I'm from Rosalie, Alabama. I started out fishing when I was uh, real young, and uh, mainly bass fishing, some crappie fishing. My dad was a crappie guide on Gunnersville. Crappie fishing uh, has been something I look forward to in the wintertime, and I bass fishing in the summertime. I got tendonitis in my elbow, so I just kind of changed gears and, and just started crappie fishing year round, and I've uh, been doing it pretty solid for the last uh, six years. I've uh, been crappie fishing about the last 12 years, but I got serious about it about six years ago. Got him! Got him! <laughs> I'm gonna break this off because I don't want to have to get the boat on top of that steak bed. Well, like I always said in bass fishing or crappie fishing, if you, if you ain't getting hung, you ain't getting where the fish are. Exactly. That cold front, when them fish get way down in the bottom the way they are right now, you've got to get down in there with them. And that's why that I stock up on these jig heads. A hundred of them, I'm about halfway through that pike, and I got a feeling by the end of this day, I'll be lucky to have any left. <laughs> well, man, these fish here ain't playing nice. No, sir. They, they're being ugly to us this morning. In the brush, they've got the option of going to the bottom and hunkering down. You got some pole timber around here to where they don't have anything under them they can get in? Yeah, I've got a, I got a place that ain't too far from here. It's a little road bed. And it's got some, got some kind of, you know, standing timber. It's a, about halfway from the bottom to the top. I think it's in about 14, 12, 14 foot of water. All right, let's go check that out. Let's do it. We found this little spot that's a little more protected, but our open water fish are still pretty finicky, so we're looking for actual structure for these fish to hang on. It's loaded down with fish. There we go. Oh, got one. Finally. Oh my goodness. I don't even want to show it on film. <laughs> well, it's better than what we've been catching though, I guess. You can't even hold that out there to make that look big. Your arms ain't long enough for that one. No. All right, we're jumping into it. We finally found the frenzy that we was looking for. Decent fish. Yep. That's a decent one. Grab that trolling motor. One of the things after you see if you're fishing with forward facing sonar, once you see that fish react and he starts following you, a lot of times you're better off to speed your reel up and try to trigger that bite, make him think that his free meal is getting away, and then they'll go ahead and hook up for you. Now these steak beds and some of this structure have got more than just crappie in it. 
It's got all kinds of other off-species fish. And Weiss has got them. If you want to go after a catfish, or goo for that matter, it's got them. Oh, it's a giant! <laughs> Coosa River spotted bass. <laughs> you know, there is every type of structure that you ever want to fish in this lake. Our pattern today has been on these stake beds. The wind and everything, it, it's got them tucked to cover. We got out of the wind, they was raised up. But we have fished man-made uh, PVC structure. We have fished natural laydowns. But today on Weiss Lake, it is definitely the stake beds that are holding the fish. What got you into crappie fishing, Jason? Well, all I, all I done was bass fish year round. And uh, I got tendonitis from, from throwing those bait casters a lot. So uh, I got healed up, went bass fishing again, throwing rattle traps, things like that. And, and uh, my, my uh, elbow got the same way, you know, and tendonitis. And, and uh, so uh, I just started crappie fishing, just, you know, kind of struck out, you know, doing it. And of course, I've been doing it year round ever since. And now you hook for good. I'm hooked for good, and that's all, I, that's all I think about most of the time. Shut your eyes, see the bobber go down, shut your eyes. You can feel the, yep, yep, feel yep. the thump. <laughs> Should've grabbed the net. Didn't matter if that fish wasn't huge. It's a finicky bite and I should have grabbed the net. If it's a real finicky bite, most of the time it's a great idea to keep your net handy because they're not sucking it way down. But if it's a crunching much, if they're train wrecking it, most of the time you can just flip them in a the boat as long as you keep the momentum coming with you. So knowing the bite is crucial on knowing whether you have to net those fish or not. No matter what the size of the fish, it depends on how they bit. Get him. Yeah. And you see where I got that and where he, where he bit at after I, after I bit that? Yep. After I bit that head off of that thing? That's that moon dust glow that I tied on, I've been using. It's an extremely natural colored bait. Uh, looks like a, a small fry, hence the name small fry. And it has uh, the glow in the belly of it. So on these overcast days, that little glow will make it easier for those fish to see. And if it's something they've never seen before, they ain't never seen a glow bait, they're gonna eat it. It's very trans translucent. Oh, Heard uppercut. One. Yeah, that's a good one. You need net? Yeah. No, no. I just meant it's a good eating size fish. No. Yeah, it, it was just a good fish. Oh, did he smoke you? Oh, he got me. Finally. Out of the wind, like you said. Out of the wind. It's something about that wind freaking these fish out and pushing them to the bottom. These fish here are more towards the top of the pile instead of way down deep in them. And out there in the wind with those big waves, everything's slapping. Uh, the, the fish were just sucked down in them and they wouldn't come up and chase and actually uh, play with us a little bit. The scenery here is absolutely stunning. The lake is incredible. The people are great. And there's anything you want to do here in and around town and any technique you want to fish can be done right here on Weiss Lake.
You may remember last year, we long lined out on a main lake. This year, we're fishing smaller areas of structure, single poling. I don't know what we're gonna do next year, but I know it's gonna be fun. We've caught about all we can here in this cove, so now Jason's gonna move us up the lake and we're gonna finish out up by the dam. Oh, where'd he go? There he is. What? What crap? What I did was I got that I got that jig close to that close to that little old pile. Yeah. And uh, I just kind of gave it just a little bit of a nudge, and when I got his attention, I started reeling it pretty fast up to the top, and he come up and choked it. But it still it still was a very light bite, though. You know, just like we've been talking about all day. Well, that's why I grabbed the net. Uh, the way the bite's been. I knew that fish was close to 12 inches and I knew I had to net it. Yeah. Because it's the hook's barely getting them because they're just not sucking it in. Right. You have and to kind of if, if you wait if you wait on there and when you see him get it and you feel it on you feel it on your rod, you gotta give it just a second till you feel your rod load up and then you can set the hook. If if not, you'll you'll jerk it away from them every time. It's just like they're coming up there just trying to maybe kill it or something, maybe not really wanting to eat it really. Got it. I choked it. Well, I was a little out of my element fishing for those black crappie. We got into some white ones right here at the end of the day, finished out that limit, had an awesome time with Jason Hawkins, beautiful lake, awesome fishery. I just love ending the day with white crappie. Did you get him? Yeah. Good fish. That's what we're looking for. That's what we come to Weiss Lake for. Nice job, man. Thanks. I had a good guide. <laughs> good captain. Dude, man, I have to tell you, this has been awesome being out here with you. Uh, past ACT champion right there, Mr. Jason Hawkins. Dude. Thanks for coming out yes, here with sir. me. Yes, sir. You all have got so much to see and so much to catch down here. I can't yeah. even tell you. It's a magnificent place in the country, right here in Northeast Alabama. Great people, great scenery, everything under the sun to do right here in Cherokee County. If you've never been to Weiss Lake, you've got to get down here and check us out. What you got to check out is next week's episode right here, same place, same channel. Next week, we're going to come at you from somewhere in the south and we're going to put them on the hook. green flow a top tone flow